G'day, and how's it going? My name is Michael Wentworth Bell, and this is a quick overview of one of my recent projects, a poster design for a Battle of the Bands event. I hope you learned something new during these next few minutes. So, let's get started. I try and design a Battle of the Band um, poster, I usually do a couple every year. Um, for this time around, the theme was a psychedelic um, 60s kind of poster. Here's how the main poster turned out and it was then applied to like a smaller A6 flyer with condensed text and then to artists and staff lanyards as well as um, various digital banners for Facebook and the web and here's the main Photoshop file and the layer stack I usually try to sort all of my layers into color coded groups with equal signs across the top so you can see where this, each group clearly starts Sometimes this helps to make sure that you don't get mixed up and confused. I'm just going to build through and turn off each of these groups one by one and get this Photoshop layer and we can go from the start. But first, let's start from the real beginning. Before jumping into Photoshop, the most important thing with every poster is your theme and your reference imagery. A solid theme and images for reference will help you throughout the whole process. Here's a collection of some of the images I used for my reference on this project. I also tried searching for a bunch of psychedelic posters. After seeing my final result and looking through some of these posters, you can see where I got inspiration for the color scheme and a lot of the, um, the visual style. The second important step for any poster is to design a clear layer. Here is the body copy I was supplied with. I had to ensure that all of this information was going to cleanly fit within the flowing lines of the design. I did a couple of rough sketches on paper to get the idea locked in and the rough spacing of all of the text. I didn't bother scanning them in and putting into Photoshop for this job. Instead, I drew some very rough guidelines for how all of the text was going to flow from left to right and um, be separated, including separation of different band words and dates and times. This um, was my guide layer that, layer that I used throughout the entire poster. Um, here's a copy of the Photoshop file earlier on. You can see how I started to put the text in and fit it along the lines. As each part of the text was put in, I'd cross it off red on the, in the document so I knew what was still left to fit in. Now is the fun part. Most of this job was creating and conforming all of this text. I used Photoshop and the warp tool to create all of this text. I was originally going to do it in Illustrator, but I found a method to do this in Photoshop that had more control and that was easy for me to make changes. If you look in the layer stack, I use smart objects for all of these text. If you've never used smart objects before, I hope you keep watching this video and so that you can learn how they can be really useful and then afterwards research them some more because they're really, really cool. Smart objects give you the ability to have a non-destructive workflow inside of Photoshop. You can see that all of these layers are smart objects. You can grab any of them, use any of your scale, perspective, skew, rotate and warp commands and change the shape of a smart object, just like a normal layer. But by clicking inside the smart object, you can see the original text. Here, you can even change the font. You can see that I don't even have the original Legrand font installed on this machine. So I'm going to change it to the default Myriad Pro. I'm going to change the text too. And then I hit, all I have to do is hit save on my original smart object and close this. And as soon as I go back, you see it's updated all those changes to the smart object. Let's go through the process of creating um, a smart object text from the beginning. Any layer in Photoshop can be a smart object. In this case, all of my text layers were. So I'll start off with any bit of text. So I'm just going to call this example text. Now put it outside of this layer stack here. Now here's my text. Before I make it a smart object, I'm going to make it a lot bigger than it needs to be. Any layer in Photoshop can be a smart object, and when you convert any layer to a smart object, 
the size that it was becomes the best and biggest size it can be. So right now this example text is way bigger than it needs to be but any image I brought in might be way bigger than it, it ever needed to be. But I click on any layer, right click on it and then I have the option to convert it to a smart object. Now you see that this text has now got the smart object icon and I can no longer edit it. But what I can do is grab it like any image or any object I can hit Control T or uh, Command T on a Mac and go into the transform mode. If you look at the top, whenever you're transforming an object, you can see that the height um, and width, the scale, is at 100%. And right now, if I put the scale down to 50% and close the tool, place, you can see that the object's obviously now half its size. Now, the cool thing about a smart object is when I go straight back into transform mode you can see that it remembers what its scale is. If this was a normal layer, it would now be telling me that that is 100%. And if I was to scale up a normal layer, I would be blowing it up bigger than it ever was, and I'd be losing resolution. The image would become softer. Because this is a smart object, I can make this bigger than it was, and as long as I don't go over more than 100%, it's gonna have great quality. And when I view this image document at 100%, you can see that it's completely sharp. That's already a great use of smart objects. You can, you might often bring in a massive uh, 15 megapixel image that's way bigger than an A3 document, drop it in, convert it to a smart object, and then you have the ability to scale it down to the size you need to be, and then scale it up and up and up, and as long as you don't go over 100%, you're gonna retain all of the image quality. So, the next step in my case was to use my transform tools to conform this shape to the wavy lines that I would drawn out. This Photoshop file doesn't have my uh, wavy lines but I can just as an example show you how I, um, the basic idea behind how I did it. So if I want this to copy the the band Rainbird, the first step is basically just scaling it up to the, the rough dimensions that you need. You can even scale it um, non-uniformly and if I right click here I pro, um, primarily use the warp tool and would start by getting the main four points into the positions that I wanted so here you can see stretch it up like that and then the secondary points here on the edges help to bring it in just how I wanted. Now these points here are hard to click on but they help to direct the actual direction of the entire outside. You can see that if I zoom in there are points sticking out from every corner and then these points here that overlap help you to make sure that everything doesn't get too stretched. So you can see here the top of the E and T is way too thick so you can bring this up and even it out like that. So that looks really good. Bring it up. Just make sure you click right on the edges of these handles and you basically just keep tweaking it until you're happy with the result. Now of course you could do this with a normal layer but here's how smart objects are really handy. If I hit enter it completes my warp and I've got the ability to make changes anytime. For example I can go back to my transform tool and you can see that auto, like any layer in Photoshop it's just reverted back to the, a bounding box of the whole thing. But if I go back to my warp unlike a normal layer the smart object remembers the shape of the actual warp and already this is really really cool if I was just using a normal layer I wouldn't be able to go back and edit this warp after I'd hit enter and committed it but it gets even better with a lot of band um, posters I always find that the client is often updating and changing the text especially the lineup of bands bands often drop out or change especially the order of the bands in the lineup using these smart objects I'm able to change the name of bands without having to actually edit my flows, which that's the real time consuming part is setting up the actual um, shapes. So to do any edits, I can go here to my layer, double click on the smart object icon, and what Photoshop has done, has opened up this layer here in a totally new temporary Photoshop file. So you don't really have to even know where this is saved, it's not important, but what is cool is you can do anything you want inside of this file and all of your updates are going to be 
recorded into the main document. So I can change this new band. You can add extra layers. So I'm going to make a new layer and put in um, just some color like that. And the only thing to remember in my case, because I'm doing these warps, is I should make sure my document fits the pixels perfectly. So let me show you what happens. All you have to do to update your changes is just hit save. File, save. As soon as you go back to your original document, you can see that the doc it's, it's just automatically updated in my original Photoshop document. But if I, and I also have the ability to undo it here. So you can see the change. It's gone from example text red to the new band text, but it's smaller. The reason it's smaller is because my document, the, the new, this new text and these new changes don't fit perfectly the Photoshop document size. So you have to crop the document to fit your changes perfectly. And there's an easy way to do that in Photoshop by going to um, Image, Trim. And this is going to look for all the transparent pixels at the top, bottom, left and right of your document and crop your Photoshop document to the very edge, just like that. That's all you have to do. So if you hit Trim, Save, and go back, you can see that my changes to the Smart Object are updated every time. So that's an easy way, crazy band, to make very quick changes to your text. Put in the, the new text, make your Photoshop document way too big than it needs to be, like this. Use the Trim command. and it's done. Hit save and back in, there it is. For some of the bigger um, pieces of text like 5 Callaway Avenue Mooney Ponds, I broke the pieces of text up into separate smart objects. The only reason I did that was so that when I used my warp tool, I had these warp points covering m much smaller of a space and it was easy to get the curve exactly how I wanted. And that was how I basically made all the different smart objects for this document. With the main text layout approved by the client and no further changes made to text, my final step was to finalize the text with the help of Illustrator. I used Illustrator in this case because if I show the document at 100%, you can see the text has a lot of uh, aliasing and pixelation around the edges, especially in some cases where the text is warped um, to extreme degree. The main reason this has happened is because by using the warp tool, areas of the text have been warped more than 100% and have become distorted. That and a combination of smart objects sometimes having errors with um, the edges of opaque and transparent edges with text. Basically sometimes when you're using smart objects, things might not be perfect. But in this case, it's quite easy to fix this using Illustrator. Um, I basically sent this to Illustrator and using Image Trace converted it to um, vector paths. If you've never done that before, keep watching and I'll show you my method. I made sure all of my text was in a single folder and using Control or um, Command E on a Mac, I hit uh, uh, merged all the layers down to a single layer and then I Alt Option um, clicked on the um, the eye, the visibility, and that soloed this layer against the transparent background. The final step before I sent this to Illustrator was to select all, so I had my selection to the very outer bounds of the document, and then go edit, stroke, and use a pretty thick stroke around the edges of the entire document. If you hit OK and zoom in, you can see the stroke has been applied to the edge there. With this ready, all I had to do was save this out as a PNG image with transparency. So I just mainly used the save for web option and chose PNG 24. Then saved it and opened it up in Illustrator. With the image imported into Illustrator, I just selected it and chose the image trace option using black and white logo as my option. Um, in this case, just wait a bit, and that's the result you get. If I zoom in, you can see just with the default results, it was 
uh, pretty great. And if it's in some cases, if it's not exactly what you want, you can see here that there's a bit of errors. The easy way to fix that is to go image trace and use your own um, custom mode. So by doing that, I can just choose any of the tracing options and hit this little option um, box here. I'm using Illustrator CS6, which it might have um, all these options in a little bit of a different place to earlier versions, but here it's been improved and it's pretty quick. Basically, it's letting me see the result real time. So change the settings, and you basically just want to get a much more detailed result. I'm not really um, concerned if it's if it's going to be pretty heavy um, vector paths as long as it looks good. There's an advanced option that lets you change how corners are going to be um, worked out by the algorithm, um, as well as the paths and the noise. But if you in my case, I just kept tweaking this until the results were good enough for me. And when you're happy with the results, which is fine in this case, you can just hit the expand button and it will convert it to um, Illustrator shapes. Then double click to isolate the object and where it was transparent before, it's now white. So using um, the direct selection tool, just select one bit of the white area, just one. Then you go select, same, uh, fill color. Then it selected all of the white areas for me. And I can hit delete. And I'm just left with my text and the main shape. And I can actually send this to Photoshop now as a Illustrator um, vector smart object, which is also really handy, just the same as a normal raster smart object. To do that, I click and drag and put the mouse over the Photoshop icon, which might be a bit off screen. And then I just drop my document into the original Photoshop file. And depending on how big the document is, you might have to wait a few seconds. Eventually it's going to show up. And because I put uh, a black border around the very edge of my vector smart object, you can see it's dropped in perfectly. And it's, there's not a single difference between my original text and my old one, apart from this new vector text is much more sharper. At 100% it looks great. And the awesome thing here is now that it's actually placed inside my Photoshop document, I can save this file, open it again in a year. Anytime I want to, I can double click on this smart object icon, which is, you can see here it says vector smart object. And it will actually load that vector smart object up in Illustrator. And I can begin making my changes. So the first changes might be to change the fill color of some of the bands. To, so let's just make this one blue. Looks like I'm in um, CMYK mode. Sometimes it does that. And in my case, I would want to get rid of the black border now because I don't need it. Although with most A3 posters, if in my case too, the edges of the poster were going to get, would be trimmed once they're printed anyway. So the black border doesn't really matter. But it's good just in case. Especially I guess in this case. It, the poster would have been used for web as well, so it's good to get rid of all the bits you don't need. And like before, every time I hit save and return to Photoshop, all the updates are made. So there it is. And actually, in this case, you can see that when I moved the remove the black borders, it actually moved my vector smart object. So maybe I'll undo that, keep the borders, hit save return to Photoshop and it puts it in the right spot and I can use a layer mask to hide the black border so I just select the area that I do want which is pretty much everything except that black border make sure this layer is selected and then use this option here which is add uh, create layer mask and you can see that it's created a black and white mask and any of the black areas are not going to show up so I've still got all the vector shapes when I double click it you can still see the black border is here, but in the final Photoshop composite, you won't see the black border at all. So here's my final vector layer, and this was done a few months ago, but you see I can double click this layer now, a few months later, and, and open up the actual vector layer that I use as the final, and you can see all the different colors, and it was very easy for me to change these colors around. The vector smart object even remembers this color swatches that I set up, 
So I can just select um, one of the, the areas of text here and change it to one of the four color swatches I had. Hit save and back in Photoshop it's updated. And that was basically how I made the text for this project. So the text was the main part of this poster. Um, building up there was obviously the main um, logo but or Battle of Bands symbol. And you can see here that I actually used a smart object again for an image. If I double click this, you can see it's a high resolution texture, um, about um, 2K, 20, um, 2,200 pixels wide. And uh, this is fr uh, from a collection of textures I got from lostandtaken.com. And you can see that that was a smart object and that single image has got a layer mask uh, a blending mode and opacity applied to it and with images you can even right click on the, the smart object layer and use the replace contents option to replace the smart object with an actual other layer or any other image that you have or any other Photoshop document you've got other object um, other options too such as exporting those contents to a separate PNG uh, PSD file or whatever you need to do as well as the Battle of the Band symbol, I had a layer mask just to add um, a bit of variation and noise to the actual vector shapes. And then I had this global adjustment layer. And again, that's using a um, crunched up paper texture, as well as a few curves um, adjustment layers. And you can see the difference that they're making here to different parts of the text. And a final um, yellow adjustment layer affecting just the yellow areas of the image. And that was my main um, poster design. So the last um, layer I had at the very top of the stack was my reference um, folder, which just had the um, my bleed and um, trim and crop marks to make sure that everything was um, going to be fine for the poster. So with everything all ready to go, I just flattened the image, saved as PDF, and send it to the printers ready to go. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope over the last few minutes that you've um, learned something new about Photoshop and smart objects. If you've got any questions or suggestions, um, leave them as a comment in this video, and check out my website, theload.com.au. There's a section there called the Mother Load, which has got um, more tutorials and project walkthroughs or overviews just like this one was. And yeah, thanks again.